Hi, my dear friends. Today we will be discussing on uh, network analysis, uh, the class one today. So here the first class we will be discussing uh, the basic uh, definitions and the term terminologies and the rules which are used uh, for determining uh, the network analysis here. So after that uh, we'll be uh, discussing from class two the numerical and uh, numericals from uh, the network analysis. So here the network analysis is a technique we use used for planning scheduling of large projects in the field of construction maintenance fabrication purchasing computer system installation and even research and development planning so in each and every area this network analysis will be used uh, for planning and scheduling the activities and this network analysis is a graphical representation of logical and sequentially connected activities and events of the project that means this is represented graphically with the help of activities and events in the network diagram so normally uh, this network it is also called as an arrow diagram we'll see uh, the network analysis uh, will be having some definitions so here uh, we have the first definition called uh, the activity so any individual operation which is uh, utilized uh, for resources which is will be having uh, the starting point as well as the end point so has an end as well as the beginning which is called as an activity so normally an activity will be represented by a line with a arrow mark so this arrow head represents the progress of the project work and here these activities it is classified into four different categories the first one the predecessor activity the first one the predecessor activity the activity that must be completed immediately prior to the start of uh, another activity is usually called as the predecessor activity and the second one is called as the successor activity and this activities that can be started until one or more other activities are completed but immediately succeed them are called successor activities and the third one concurrent activities so concurrent activities uh, which are uh, can which can be uh, accomplished concurrently uh, as known as uh, the concurrent activities which uh, normally which goes uh, parallelly one uh, along the other so is called as uh, the concurrent uh, activities it may be noted that uh, any activity uh, that can be a predecessor or a successor uh, to an event uh, or it may be uh, concurrent with one or more uh, the other activities so and lastly we have one more uh, activity which is called as a dummy activity so this dummy activity uh, does not consume any kind of uh, the value or uh, the resources here so normally whatever dummy activity it is uh, uh, normally it will be used it will be having uh, the resource uh, considered as the zero so the dummy activity is inserted in the network uh, just to clarify that uh, in the pattern uh, when there are uh, two situations exists one is to make activities with common uh, starting point and finishing point to distinguish that one and the second uh, point is that to identify and maintain the proper pre uh, precedence relationship between uh, the activities uh, that is not connected by uh, the events the next definition is uh, the event so normally an event is represented by a point in the time significant uh, signifying the completion of some activities and the beginning of uh, the new ones this is usually represented by circle as we shown in the previous slide in the network which is also called as a node or even it is called as a connector and again uh, the events has been classified into three categories here so coming to the first one uh, the merge event so normally when you have uh, to one event when there are two activities which are uh, joining together uh, it is called as the merge event when more than one activity comes and joins uh, an event uh, such events is normally called as the merge event and the second one is uh, the burst event so when more than one activity uh, leaves uh, from uh, an event uh, such such event it is known as uh, the burst event so and the third one is uh, merge and uh, burst event when you have the combination of both uh, 
the merge activities as well as the burst ev uh, event uh, activities from the same uh, event it is called as uh, merge and burst event and when you draw uh, any type of uh, network diagram uh, normally we have to follow some uh, kind of uh, rules uh, for drawing the network diagram so here we'll see some of the uh, rules this is the first rule which says each activity is represented by one and only one arrow in the network that means uh, when you are representing between the two activities uh, two events so you have here the two events you have this is first event this is sec second event so this first and second event should be connected only by one activity but here the same uh, uh, the two events it is connected by uh, two activities here so this is the wrong way of representation of the uh, network and second no two activities can be identified by the same end events if this is the same end event there cannot be two activities which are coming from that and the third one whenever you draw any uh, activity or any network or any event uh, you should ask your uh, self that what activity must be completed immediately before this activity can start so be, uh, uh, with this statement you will be analyzing what exactly you have to uh, write and what uh, activity it has to come following with this one and what activities must follow this activity once you write that activity what are the other activities we should follow the same activity and what activities must occur simultaneously with this activity that means uh, parallelly is there any activities which can start from the same event that also you need to check then so after that uh, normally uh, when we are drawing we will make some common uh, mistakes uh, uh, in the network diagram so to avoid that one i'll just show you some of the errors what commonly we will uh, do when we make uh, uh, the network diagram uh, see the first one it is called as a daggling so here the daggling is a error uh, wherein uh, see, this is a network diagram we can uh, see here which is completely closed uh, with one activity one event to another event or the activity to other activity so when it when you see this first event to second event and this is the activity which is completely uh, away from uh, this entire uh, direction of the path of the uh, network diagram so this kind of error it is called as a dangling and the second one is called as looping or cycling so looping error is also known as a cycling error in the network diagram so drawing an endless so this is an endless uh, loop in a network is nor normally known as the looping or it is called as a cycling error see when you take one two and three four so this is becoming one loop and two five seven six and this is becoming one more loop so this kind of looping uh, you need to uh, avoid and instead of uh, making uh, the loop it should be connected either with the dummy activity or some activity so to complete the network diagram and even here so uh, to avoid uh, the daggling errors what you can do you can just uh, uh, mark with uh, some dummy uh, dummy row or dummy uh, sorry dummy activities uh, like this so that you can able to complete uh, the network without any uh, uh, fail uh, that is the errors so uh, that doesn't mean that uh, wherever uh, it is uh, possible simply uh, unnecessarily you are not supposed to draw even this uh, the dummy activity See, that is called as uh, the redundancy the redundancy is the one because here you have the first activity uh, event the second event and the third event so from here to here you have uh, an activity which is uh, emerging from one to two and from two to three you have an activity and three to four there is an activity and why again there is an unnecessary insertion of this dummy activity so there is no need of this dummy uh, dummy activity here so this kind of dummy simply if you insert into the network diagram so that kind of uh, error it is called as a redundancy errors so to calculate uh, the critical path in the network analysis we need to determine some of the uh, points or some of the values uh, to get uh, the critical path in the network diagram so to get the critical path first initially we need to determine the earliest times that is determination of earliest times that earliest times normally we will be uh, determining in the forward pass computation that is in the forward direction we will be determining earliest times 
the earliest uh, times for each event when you take uh, for the event one or event two for each event it will be having the earliest start time as well as the earliest finish time so that earliest time it will be uh, ei and the earliest finish time will be uh, the earliest start time of uh, the previous one plus uh, the duration of uh, the activity so which will give you oh, the earliest finish time of the activity and similarly even you can calculate uh, uh, what you call the latest uh, allowable time for each uh, event or each activity here so usually again as i said for uh, the earliest times here also you have the latest finish as well as the latest uh, start time for each uh, activity we'll see in the class 2 uh, how uh, you can able to calculate all these earliest times as well as uh, uh, latest times uh, in the activity and uh, along with that uh, latest uh, and uh, earliest times you have the float values so we'll see uh, you have three different floats here uh, the total float and uh, the free float and you have one more called as a free float coming to the first one the total uh, float the amount of time by which the completion of an activity could be delayed beyond the earliest expected completion time so without affecting the overall project duration time so this it is called as a total float without affecting the overall project duration so whatever float it is uh, getting that float it is called as a total float so next is the free float free float is the one uh, which is consuming the time by which the completion of an activity can be delayed beyond the earliest finish time without affecting the earliest start of the subsequent activities uh, you can take any subsequent activity you should not affect the earliest start time then coming to the independent float the amount of time by which the start of an activity can be delayed without affecting the earliest start time of an any immediately following the activity assuming that the preceding activity has finished at its latest finish time okay and the last one is uh, the event slack the event slack is nothing but uh, uh, you have uh, the two events here you take any event uh, when you consider the latest event as well as the earliest event times when you take the difference of that so that it is called as a event slack then to determine uh, after uh, uh, calculating the earliest latest times you can able to calculate uh, the critical path based on those values and when you before you calculate the critical path you have uh, there are three uh, critical uh, definition that is the critical event the critical activity and the critical path critical event is nothing but the event with uh, zero slacks with uh, zero slacks it is called as a critical event and when it uh, uh, critical activity is nothing but when you take between the activities whatever uh, the activity it comes as a critical uh, activity so that it is called as a critical activity the activities with zero total float are known as critical activities in other words the activities is said to be critical if a delay in its start will cause a further delay in the completion of the date of the entire project so if any delay in this activity if it takes place so then the entire date of project it will again prolong or it will get delayed so that kind of activities it is called as a critical activity and coming to the critical path so critical path is one uh, when you take the complete project uh, connecting all the critical activities so that path it is called as a critical path see here the sequence of critical activities in a network is called as the critical path the critical path is the longest path in the network uh, from the starting event to the ending event and defines minimum time required to complete the project this is one uh, uh, route or the path where it will give you uh, the minimum required time to complete the entire project and this path will be normally it is it will be the largest part uh, path in the network diagram so thank you for listening uh, to the basics of uh, the network analysis uh, in the class 2 uh, we will be uh, solving uh, the network uh, analysis uh, problem. Thank you.